Good morning. This is Rob Laubach from the Soma Institute, the National School of Clinical Massage Therapy in Chicago, Illinois. My treatment today is going to focus on DDD, or degenerative disc disease. This condition can affect both the cervical and the lumbar spine. Today, I'm going to be focusing on the cervical spine. Techniques in both of those particular conditions are roughly the same. The main thing is using traction to decompress the spine. What's happening in this condition is the annular fibers of the intervertebral disc, the cushion between the vertebra and the spine, those annular fibers have started to break down and the nucleus propulsus, the kind of viscous liquid inside, is starting to push back and in doing so, it's compressing the spinal cord or the spinal nerves from the spinal cord. So we really want to focus on the muscles that are protecting the neck. A couple of things to remember here. A uh, special test that you would have used to determine what this is. For the cervical spine, you would have used something like Sperling's compression test, decompression test, those three. For the lumbar spine, you would use straight leg raise or Kemp's test. So just keep those in mind. A couple of contraindications to remember. If the client cannot lay in a comfortable position, it is probably best to refer them out. And two, in the acute stage, you do not want to take all of the uh, protective guarding out at one time. The joints need that protective guarding in that acute phase. So a couple of things to remember with that. So we're going to focus on the cervical uh, spine today. Uh, we're going to follow general protocol and the three muscles that I plan to address are SCM, anterior scalene, and upper traps. So to start my treatment, I'm going to just follow our general protocol. So I'm going to start with a resting position on my client. Just a reminder, when you're working in the cervical region, make certain that you're not breathing down on the client. So I'm going to just turn my head slightly to the side and ask my client to go ahead and take a couple of nice deep breaths in for me. Something to also remember, even though this treatment is going to be specific and at times probably a little bit uncomfortable, you still want to work in decreasing the sympathetic nervous system. You want to relax the client, but still work specifically. So after that resting position, I've introduced my touch. I can do a little bit of stroking on the cervical region. Client kind of knows where I am. They are getting accustomed to my touch. And then after my stroking, I'm going to start my general warming. So I'm going to start using some dry work. For the upper traps, I'm going to use some pincer grasping. Make sure when you do this technique that you actually do have the muscle and not just skin. So you want to be sure that you are really making good contact with the muscle itself. Just getting that warmed up. Again, so as I mentioned, I'm going to be working on SCM and upper traps and anterior scaling. So I'm on upper trap. Right now, I'm going to work on the posterior neck because we all know that upper trap attaches all the way up to the occiput. Sort of a rope pulling technique. You'll see that my fingers come out on this side, my thumb is on the other side, and I just lean back. You want to make sure during this treatment that you don't move the client in any sudden movements because again, the, the muscles in this area are guarding, they're, they're spasming to some point. So no sudden movements. I don't want to take all of the guarding out, especially in the acute phase. And with cervical DDD, chances are it's going to be a gradual onset. It's not going to be caused by a trauma where that could be the case with the lumbar spine. One other thing is any stretching that you do to muscles, 
make sure that it, it is in a pain-free range for the client. So I've got that upper trap pretty nicely warmed up. I'm going to do a little bit of pin and stretch for this side of the neck. This will allow me to get a little bit of SCM and a little bit of the anterior scalene. So I'm going to move my client's head and pin this tissue down with my palm and slowly bring their head to the opposite side. And you can, you can see that stretch that I'm getting. And again, I, I want to be certain that that is all in a pain-free range for my client. You'll notice I'm taking great care. I'm moving the client slowly, but that's a nice beginning stretch. So again, this is all myofascial release. The other thing that I want to make sure that you do in this treatment is we're going to be using a lot of tractioning because we're trying to decompress the spine, allow that intervertebral disc back in between the vertebra. So you're going to start with a mild tractioning and towards the end of the treatment, the tractioning will get a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger. So after I've done my fascial work, I'm going to go ahead and implement a mild traction. I've got my hand under the neck and my hand on top of the head and I'm just going to lean back. I've got my hand kind of hooked onto the occiput and I'm just leaning back, getting a mild contraction or a mild tractioning, excuse me. Um, if my client, if you would go ahead and take a nice deep breath in and let that go. Good. And I'll bring that slowly back in. After a little bit more warming, I'm going to do a technique that we call clearing. Clearing is going to the attachments of the muscles, both the insertions and the origins, and doing kind of a quick frictioning across the muscle to start to loosen it up a little bit. Now, after I've done my myofascial work and I've done a little bit of tractioning, for joint mobilizations, I can start to just move the head, move the spine, and some pain-free movements. One thing that you will want to implement is translation, where you bring the head to the side. So I'm just, it's a way for me to kind of assess where he is as well. So I could bring him off to the side, bring him back to the center move them off to the other side. I'm just kind of testing and seeing where things might be painful for him. So this could be basically considered your joint mobilizations here, along with the tractioning, of course. Okay. So then I want to start clearing. Again, this is not a particularly comfortable technique, but it does address the ends of the muscle so that they start to relax. So for SCM, again, be mindful when you turn the head. SCM is this muscle that is here. So it attaches to the mastoid process of the temporal bone. And then it has two attachments here on the sternum and on the medial clavicle. So the technique, basically I'm going to use my fingers and come to that mastoid process. And it's just going to be a quick across the bone. I'm kind of pinning the muscle to the bone and going across it in this fashion. Again, the mastoid process is not that big, so I'm not going to do it too much here. I'm going to come down, find those two attachments here, and I'm going to maybe use my thumb, push into the clavicle, and then also attaches to the sternum. And you'll feel that tendon. For upper traps, upper traps attaches to the occiput, to the acromion process, and to the spine of the scapula. So I'm going to take my fingers and find the occiput, and I'm going to be going in this direction, back and forth, on that upper trap. So I'm going to pin it. I'm kind of pinning. down 
down to the acromion process. And with regards to the spine of the scapula, it's going to be the superior portion of the spine of the scap. And I'm just going to come across it like this. And kind of work my way out towards that acromion process. And then finally, for clearing, for the anterior scalene, the scalene is attached to the TBPs and then to either the first or the second rib. If you're not certain where those are, I'm going to ask my client to lift his head just slightly on his own. And you'll notice here is SCM. And anterior scalene is just behind SCM. Okay, go ahead and relax for me. So I'm going to come into the side of the neck here and I'm going to clear those TBPs. I'm going to work my way down. Just staying behind that SCM. And then I can push under the clavicle to that first rib and come across there. And that's going to be all of the clearing. So now that the clearing is done, and, and you can see that there is some nice redness, so I've got at least local circulation uh, starting to increase here. So after that clearing, I might come in again and just do a general mild traction. All right. Now, with regards to SCM, to get deeper warming, we're going to use a little bit of lotion and uh, petrissage. But with SCM, because of its relationship where it is, its relationship to the throat, I'm, it's, it's not wise to do effleurage on that muscle. So before I add lotion to address the other two, I'm actually going to come in and do this before I put lotion on. I'm going to do it dry. And the best way to get SEM is going to be with sort of a pincer grasp, kind of like this. The thumb is going to be on one side and your index finger will be on the other side. And basically the way that you treat SEM, it's called pill rolling. Again, so I'm not going to push down SEM. I'm just going to grab it and pill roll it. So I'm going to shorten the muscle a little bit so that I can get around it. So now I've got a good grasp of that. And all I'm going to do is kind of roll it between my fingers. And I'm going to ask my client if there's any sensitivity in this area. Is that tender? Okay. But remember, it goes up to just behind the ear. So I'm going to continue up, grab on another part here, and just kind of pill roll it. Anything in here? No. A lot of times you'll find sensitivity the closer you get to the mastoid process. Anything in here? How about here? Something right there. Okay. So I'm going to ask my client to go ahead and take a couple of nice deep breaths for me. And if you could give that a pain scale, what would you give that? Five. Five. Okay. So he gave it a five, and I'm going to just hold that and have him continue to breathe. Is that going down? Yeah. Okay. Where would you say it is now? It's a two. Okay. So you want to work with, when you're doing trigger point work, you want to kind of work with a pain scale of about four to six. Uh, if you go anywhere above six, again, that the body could adversely uh, react and, and uh, spasm more. How's that? Is it gone? Yeah, no. Okay. So I'm going to come out of that nice and easy. Now, to stretch SCM, SCM, when it contracts concentrically, rotates the head in the opposite direction and does lateral flexion to the same side. So to get a nice stretch, I'm actually going to turn him in this direction. 
across my hands, and I'm going to get a nice stretch of that SEM. Let me know when you feel a stretch there. Yeah. Okay. And again, I want to work in a pain-free stretch. Take a deep breath in. And relax. Bring the head back. This is where I would then implement another traction. So after each muscle that I work on, I'm going to bring in a tractioning. And I'm trying to get a little bit stronger with this as I go. How's that? Good. All right. So then I'm going to apply a little bit lo of lotion so I can start working on upper traps and anterior scaling. Okay. I can come up the back of the neck too. All right, so let's do a little bit of deeper warming for this upper trap. So to, get, to have good body mechanics, it's usually good to sit on the opposite side of the neck that you're working on. And especially if someone has a cervical condition, you really want to make sure that you are supporting the head. So I'm going to start right back here because trap starts on that occiput. I'm just going to come down and come back up. And I'm going to use the table as leverage to get a little bit deeper into that trap. My left hand, you'll notice my fingers here, are kind of just holding on to the back of the neck so it doesn't move on me. Come up the back. Now if you wanted to get a little bit deeper as well, you can use a loose fist. Start right under that mastoid process and push down into that trap. Just lighten your pressure right there at the bone and come back around. All right, so let's get a little bit deeper into that upper trap. I'm going to bring in a little bit of petrissage. So maybe a nice technique here, pincer grasping and squeeze kneading. So I really want to focus on that upper trap. And I'm going to ask my client here in a minute if there's any sensitivity in any particular part of this muscle. I'm just kind of getting deeper into the muscle right now, getting it warmed up. Trap is an interesting muscle too. The upper trap flares out to the shoulder and then the lower portion of trap goes all the way down to the SPs of T12. So it's a really big muscle for the most part. And so the upper trap, to kind of treat it, we're going to use more of a pincer grasp. So I'm going to come in and grab onto that upper trap and again kind of do this pill rolling and ask my client if there's any particular spot. Just let me know if I hit something that feels pretty sensitive. Here. Right here? Okay. Yeah. Can you give me a pain scale with that from 1 to 10? It's a 6. 6. Okay. It's a good level to work with. So go ahead and take a couple of deep breaths for me. Again, my head is off to the side so that I'm not breathing on the client, but I'm breathing with the client. Where are we about now? Almost gone. Almost gone. Okay. One big breath in. And relax. Gone? Yeah. Okay. And I'm going to smooth this out. You might come in and try and do one more. So I've, if you think about it, I've done two uh, trigger points, two tender points. I've done one in the SCM and one in upper trap. So I might look for one more in upper trap and then I'm going to move down to anterior scalene. 
So again, I'm going to kind of do some pill rolling here. Let me know if there's any spot here that feels sensitive. Here, yes. Right here. Okay. Give me another pain scale. It's a four. Four. Okay. Big breath in. Try your best, even though there's lotion, not to slip off of the muscle. And don't ask too soon. Wait about 12 seconds before you ask if the pain is going down. Where are we now? Gone. Gone? Okay. And always come out of that gently and easily. One thing you do want to ask, if there was any referral pain, did that pain travel anywhere? Or did it just stay local? Local. Local. Okay. All right. So the last muscle that I'm going to focus on is anterior scalene. Now, after I've released a couple of points in that upper trap, I again want to come in with my tractioning. So I'm under the neck, on the forehead, and now you've got lotion on. So you've got to remember that you might be sliding. And if you are sliding, it's okay to kind of maybe get some of the lotion off your hands and then come back in and traction. How's that? Okay, take a deep breath in and exhale. And then I just let that go very easily. Okay, so my last muscle, and I can tell there's a lot of, there's a lot of change on this side. This side is not as uh, tight as this side. There's a lot more pliability. So that's a good sign. All right, so finally with anterior scalene. Anterior scalene lies right behind SCM and even kind of dips under it just a, a small amount. So best way to find it is to kind of go to the side of that SCM, so the back portion of SCM. You'll see where my index finger is. There's SCM right there. So I'm going to come in and use my thumb. And I'm just going to do small kind of stripping through here to find something. I'm not going to do long strokes down like this. They're going to be kind of smaller. So I'm going to find those TVPs up here, right in here. And I'm going to ask my client, as I do some kind of s techniques like this with my thumb, to let me know if there's any sensitivity here. Right here? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. You could kind of tell he flinched um, his shoulder. What uh, pain scale could you give that? Uh, it's a five. Five. Okay. Go ahead and take a nice deep breath in. Where would you say that is now? No, it's one. One. Okay. Yeah. So it's gone down pretty fast. Would you say that that's gone? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to come in and kind of smooth that work out. I'm going to try and find maybe one more. And like I mentioned, you don't want to take all of the protective uh, guarding out in one session. You'll want to maybe book another session with the client in that same week, um, if not uh, in the next week for sure. So I'm going to come back behind that SEM again and kind of short techniques with my thumb. Let me know here. here. Okay. Give me a pain scale. It is a four. Four. Okay. Nice big breath in. And again, like I mentioned, wait about 12 seconds before you ask. If the pain does not decrease, and the client says it's still the same pain scale, you might hold it a few more seconds, and if it's not releasing, you'll definitely want to come out of that nice and slow. How are we doing now? Yeah, it's two. Two, okay. A couple more deep breaths in. And how about now? Yeah, 
it's gone. Gone. Okay. And I'm going to come out of that nice and easy. Smooth it out. Now, the tractioning that I want to do now is I want to put a little bit of translation into the tractioning. So I'll bring my head, client's head to center and I'm going to move them slightly off to the side. And traction here. Let that go. And I can bring them off to this side. To stretch upper traps and that anterior scalene, they both do lateral flexion to the same side. So I'm going to bring my client's head here, again staying in that pain-free range. My forearms are crossed. I'm going to hold the shoulder down and then push that aside. And you can even see that stretch. Is that okay? couple of deep breaths in. Good. And then I probably will end with one nice bigger traction. A nice way that you can do that is this forearm can come underneath and I'm going to kind of hook my radius onto his occiput. You'll notice I've got kind of control of that. Gentle pressure on the forehead, and then just lean back, kind of scoot back in your stool and pull your forearm. How's that? Good. One big breath in, and relax. Now, one more thing that you should do. Because we have released the muscles to some degree, we've released some of that spasming, that guarding, you actually want the muscles to go back into a, a mild kind of contraction. Not a spasming, not a protective guarding, but you basically want to reset the muscles. So what I'm gonna ask my client to do is four actions with just very, very little contraction. One, I want you to push your head, again, very, very mild, push your head into the table for me. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. So he pushed his cervical spine into extension. I'm gonna apply a little pressure on the forehead, very mild contraction. Try to bring your forehead to your sternum. Five, four, Three, two, one, relax. And then I'm going to have him try to do a contraction in either direction here. Try to bring your right ear towards your right shoulder, very mild. Five, four, three, two, one, relax. And on this side, push this way. Five, four, three, two, one, and relax. So at the end of the treatment, make sure that the client is draped. You'll take the bolster out. And something that I would suggest that the client does to actually get off of the table. If the client just sits up, they're going to actually probably let their head fall back to some degree. So I'm going to instruct my client, when you are ready to get off the table, what I'd like for you to do is to roll onto your side. You're going to roll to this side and basically push yourself up with your hand and your arm so that you try to keep that neck as straight as possible. Mm -hmm.